Hi everybody, this is Neil Bradshaw for UberPie, and um, I'm going to show you how to do something on the UberPie Mini that is uh, a little non-standard. Um, basically, the bottom line is that emulation station normally feeds the keys for your controller um, to these different emulators, but there's two emulators on the system that that does not happen for the Super Nintendo and the Neo Geo. Um, both of them require manual configuration. Now by default, when you get this system, the keys are going to be set up for the uh, PS3 style controller. But you may have a joystick or you may have a different kind of controller and you may want to uh, configure that one instead. And you're not going to be able to do it directly through Emulation Station. It's a little bit tricky but not bad. So with that I'm going to get started. And I'm going to take my key, my uh, controller, I'm going to hit start on it, and we're going to configure the input. And yeah, I want to configure the input. And what's going to happen now is that I'm going to go through the whole sequence like I normally would if I was first starting into RetroPie or I was configuring a second controller. And it says one game pad detected, it's mine. So I'm going to do what it says up down left right that part doesn't matter a whole lot what matters is where you hit like start and then select see how it says button 10 and button 11 start for 11 select for 10 okay and then you go for a b x y left shoulder right shoulder and it probably i don't think it matter these matter past that but you can you still need to do your left trigger, your right trigger, left thumb, right thumb, whatever it says with the analog buttons. And now here's what I want you to see. I'm going to go back up. So you're going to need your left shoulder, your right shoulder, um, A, B, X, Y. And I think for Neo Geo, you really just need A, B, X, Y. It's, it was a uh, four button console. But you have to write these numbers down. So... Button 11, button 10, button 1, button 0, button 4, button 3, which correspond to those buttons that you've configured. Whatever the buttons are on your controller, you need to take it and write it down on a piece of paper. Because this little piece of paper is going to be vitally important here in just a minute. So I'm going to back out of this. I'm done. I've configured the controller. It was already configured anyway, but I had to do it to show you. And so, we're going to actually uh, go ahead and once this exits, sometimes it hangs up a little bit on exit, but it'll eventually do it. Okay, so it went into Neo Geo because I was pushing buttons to get it out of that configuration mode. So, what you got to do from here, is, like I said, all the other stuff on the system is configured except for the Neo Geo and the Super Nintendo. So there's two files you have to edit. So to edit those files, you have to press the F4 button on your controller, on your uh, keyboard. F4. And when you do F4, uh, you can see this mess. It's going to take you into the RetroPie console. And uh, for this, let's see here, this might be a little bit tricky. I'm going to show you where to go. Basically, you need to go to uh, sudo nano slash opt slash retropie slash dot emul. Or, I'm sorry, there's no dot there. Emulators slash pifba slash fba2x.cfg that's sudo nano slash op slash retropie slash emulator slash pi fba slash fba2x.cfg when you type sudo nano basically what you're doing is you're editing the text file and you're using the sudo command to have root privileges to do it otherwise it won't let you do it so you go ahead and do that boom hit enter and you're going to get this screen and what you got is first you got the keyboard list don't worry about that 
Um, just go right past that because you're not going to use the keyboard to play this this uh, this system. This is the Neo Geo, the Pi FBA. That's that's Neo Geo, for clarification. Um, so right here where it says joysticks, you're going to have like A1, B1, X1, Y1, L1, R1. So it does matter to have all have all six of those. Plus to start and select. Now, if you can actually zoom in or read this, you, you'll see it on your screen when you pull it up. But um, A1 is going to, I've already got it set up. But A1 is going to correspond to what I wrote down earlier. A1, A1 is 1. So A is 1. B is 0. X is 4. Y is 3. So forth and so on. You can read it. You, you can pause it and look at it. Hopefully my uh, cell phone camera will go right back to it. It looks like it did. So next to the A underscore 1 equals, you need to make it 1. Just like you have on the sticky paper or the piece of paper you wrote down from the emulation station configuration. Uh, B underscore 1 equals 0. And you just continue on. Now, and then where you have it says start and select, you obviously put in the uh, 11 and 10 like I said. Or whatever it says on your controller when you configured it. Whatever you wrote down. Don't just go off of what I'm saying. Go through the configuration. Write it down. Do it the right way. Otherwise your controller will be so screwed up in Super Nintendo and Neo Geo. So where it's got stuff down here like it says J-A-L-R-J-U-D. Uh, the joystick axes don't really matter for the... Uh, they don't really matter when it comes to this. So what I basically do is like if I got like this where I got like 0, 1, 4, 3, 6, 7, 11, 10 for my uh, buttons from A to select. I'll just make sure that uh, J, A, L, R and J, U, D is like 12 and 13. So you're not having a key that actually has two functions. Like you don't want to have an A key and a J, A, L, R key because sometimes that jacks with stuff. So then you just continue down, um, there's player 2, player 3, player 4. You just repeat the exact same numbers for all of those, all the way down. Because um, they're all going to be the same. It's going to know that that's the button on that other controller, unless you have a different controller. If you have a different controller, you need to actually configure that controller and get the button numbers off that one. I mean, that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Because when you're dealing with the Uber Pi Mini, when you're dealing with the Ra uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W, you're dealing with uh, an environment that needs the Pi FBA and Pi uh, SNES, I believe it is. You need those emulators because they have specific code for ARM architecture, if I remember right. So, basically, you need to go ahead and do it this way because if you try and run the normal... Neo Geo or SNES emulators that you would on the Uber Pi system on the normal Raspberry Pi uh, 3 uh, Model B, it's going to run really bad, really bad. It's not optimized, not optimized for uh, this architecture. It's, it doesn't handle it. I think the Zero has a dual core and the uh, Pi 3 has a quad core and you're talking about a difference between 1 gigahertz and 1.3. And you're talking about uh, half the amount of RAM in the Zero. So you have to use these emulators to make it work. If you don't, then it won't work. I mean, it will. It'll look really terrible and you won't be able to play it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control X. And it would normally ask you if you wanted to save it. And you just hit Y and you hit Enter and it'll save that file just like it is. So the other one is the SNES9x.cfg. It's in the same spot. Pseudo nano slash op slash retro pi slash emulators. Then it goes to a different spot. Pi SNES, all lowercase. And then slash SNES9x.cfg. So it's in a slightly different location, but pretty close. And you just go ahead and hit enter. And it's the same deal. The exact same deal a b x y l r start select now the only thing you want to do here is um 
if you notice, you're going to have stuff, and I actually did not do this one right, so I need to fix it. Um, you're going to have stuff that says like Q load, Q save. It's going to save state and all that other stuff in load state. And you don't really want to mess with that a whole lot. I mean, you can, but don't really need to and you don't really want to. So just, uh, I don't know, make it whatever. See, because for the joystick D-pad buttons, um, I've already got, I've already got uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you can, as long as you don't take a number that's already taken, uh, I don't see 5 on there. So... Let's go ahead and use five. So we got zero, one, zero, four, three, six, seven. I don't see a two on there. So we'll just make it a two. But the other numbers, the other numbers, they, they need to stay the same. Whatever, whatever you got, whatever you pulled from emulation station and wrote down on that piece of paper, they need to stay the same. They're, and they're literally like the exact same as they would be in um the neo geo file the only difference here is you only have two controllers instead of four pi snes runs um runs uh super nintendo roms much better than the other one it, the other one does work but it's just a little slightly glitchy and it's a pain this is better but the only bad thing about this one too is it only supports two controllers so if you want four controllers you need to switch your emulator which I could probably actually show you that. So I'm going to hit Control X. So it says save, modify, buffer, answer, no, will destroy changes. So I want to answer yes. Hit a Y. Hit enter to save the exact same file name. And I'm going to type exit to get out. Exit will reboot emulation station. And it will allow us to go back into RetroPie and fool around. And I'm going to show you how to uh, switch those emulators. If There are a few games that are four-player. If you get four controllers and you want to do it, that's going to be a little bit confusing figuring out which one's one, two, three, and four. But you can do it. You just have to switch emulators. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to Super Nintendo. And I'm going to hit the A button to go into it. So I got this list. Um, I'm just going to pick any game. We'll just pick Earthworm Gem just for sake. Now watch real closely. Whenever it starts up, there's going to be like a little gray box. And it's going to say press any key or something like that to get into configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and A and go into Earthworm Gym. Now it's saying press the button to configure. All errors are logged. That's how you do it right there. It says your system is SNES. It says your emulator is Pi SNES. If you want to switch to something that supports four player mode, you're going to want to go to this uh, select default emulator for SNES. And you can actually select the emulator for just the ROM. So if you really want to just select the four player emulator for just the ROM with, the, with four players, you can do that for individual games. But um, for the entire emulator, for everything else, um, you go into this and you just see... You got four options because I actually went in and installed Pi SNES manually, so it's there. But if you want to switch, you want to go to that LR SNES 9X2002. That's the one you want. The 2005 and the 2010 are, are slower as the number goes up. I don't know if it's because it's later year builds and they just uh, have more to them. And they don't support uh, processors of this low of end. But if you want those multiplayer games, you're going to have to go to uh, that first option there in the menu. But otherwise, just stick with Pi SNES. And that's about it. So that's how you do it. If you want to switch emulators, and you can do, you can, if you really want to hurt yourself today, See if you still feel you can switch the Neo Geo emulator and you can see how crappy that runs. It's a dream come true um, if if you're uh, like living on Elm Street. So don't do that. And that's it for this whole video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helps out the UberPi users. I hope it helps out everybody um, who has a configuration like this. So they aren't like, why doesn't my controller work? Uh, have a good day.